Clint Josh. <clears throat> Our speaker is Dr. Steve Groff, who was a partner and orthopedic surgeon with OSS. After a near tragic accident, he retired. He went on to develop Windridge Farms with his wife Julie and son Taylor, and has become a serial entrepreneur. To emphasize that, this is his, going to be his third time speaking to Rotary. It's the third time he's speaking about a completely different company that he's forming. <laughs> Steve and Julie, who joins us today, are the owners of Windridge Farms, which produces hard ciders and has expanded into craft beer and sodas, and of course, so is the beautiful facility itself and the fine dining restaurant. In addition, the Gras turned their former home into a wedding and event space. And we could have Steve talk on these aspects, but as mentioned, he has been busy creating other equally interesting businesses. There is Pharmacy Partners, and that is pharmacy spelled with an F, as in farming, the land. Pharmacy Partners is where Steve blends his childhood background in farming with his current working of the soil, adds in his medical expertise to build out a community resource of a growing body of cannabis science perhaps another program for another time. Today, however, we have Steve here to present on his latest venture, which is involving the industrial hemp and his newly formed company, Roth North America. Industrial hemp is about to make a huge resurgence on the agricultural scene in the United States. Hemp is one of the most useful plants on Earth, and for thousands of years, Humans have used parts of the hemp plant for food, textiles, paper, fabric, and fuel oil, and soon medical aspects. This incredibly diverse plant has tremendous uses for our society and will help strengthen our country's farming roots by offering new economic incentives to stakeholders at all levels of the evolving industry. With the legalization of hemp with the 2018 Farm Bill and Steve's unique background in agriculture, medicine, and business building, Steve began to explore the hemp initiative with his family. This has quickly developed into an opportunity to pioneer a new industry from a very old plant. York County is about to become the center of this exciting new area of research and growth. Whole plant utilization will be an important part of the success of this emerging industry. Steve and his family are developing a vertically integrated seed to shelf hemp company. For our Rotarians and guests, please warmly welcome one of our former members, Dr. Steve Crock. Thank you, Mike. Good afternoon, everybody. It's an honor to be here. Uh, I have to admit, as I was sitting here this afternoon, I'm began to think uh, maybe I shouldn't be doing this. I'm about to stand in front of this group in York County and talk about cannabis. So, uh, uh, but I decided to go ahead and do it. So we're going to have some fun here. I hope to uh, educate everyone here a little bit. Our family's learned a lot. There's a lot to, to learn about this fascinating industry. So again, I'm thrilled to be here. Um, I want to mention uh, my wife Julie and son Taylor, who's not here with us, but uh, I have to say, Without the two of them, I wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be doing what we're doing. So very really thankful for the support that uh, and the hard work that they have contributed to this whole venture. And uh, again, I'm excited to share some things with you. So uh, as Mike shared, I, I've had some interesting uh, career changes. I grew up on a dairy farm in Lancaster County. I uh, didn't want to do that for a living, so I went to medicine and became an orthopedic spine surgeon. Started practicing uh, here with Joe Daniels Group in 96. And, uh, had, a, had a great run in surgery. Uh, I, I was very fortunate to be part of OSS and lead the development of that campus on Palermo Road. Uh, got wiped out of a bicycle crash in 2011 that nearly could have left me paralyzed. I'm very fortunate and uh, stopped doing surgery after that and uh, really tried to find where I was going to head next. Our family um, worked hard and, and built a, a company called Windridge Farm and it's been a lot of fun. Uh, all along the way, I, I'm still board certified, I still have my license, and I really felt there was something more for me. I enjoyed building that business and that brand, but I kind of felt there was something more. And uh, about a year or so ago, I started to look at cannabinoid therapy and what it could do in medicine. And obviously, Pennsylvania then developed a, what's called a medical marijuana program. Uh, I just want to say we're not involved with the medical marijuana program, and we're not involved in marijuana. We're going to talk about what that is and how it relates to hemp, because I think that's really important. Um, 
And as I began to look at cannabinoid therapy, I realized that hemp was about to be legalized in this country. And I didn't really know that much about hemp other than what probably many of you hear about. It was used to be used for rope and sales, and, and it was illegal. Well, it was legalized in 2018, December, with the so-called Farm Bill. And so realizing that and beginning to study some of the things that were coming down the pike, we became very interested in it. And we have uh, built out a team and built out some very interesting initiatives. And uh, again, I'm going to share them with you. So, one of the things we talk about in our company is being a voice of reason. Um, as I said, there's so much, uh, there's a lot of misinformation out there. There's uh, a lot of stigma that's been associated with hemp and, and associating it with marijuana. And uh, part of our goal is to educate folks and talk about what it is, what it isn't, what we truly know, what we need to learn yet. Um, so that's an important part of our, our mission along with education. So. Um, hemp is an incredible plant. You're going to hear us say that over and over again. And when you start to realize some of these things that you may not have known, I think most people also agree this is an incredible thing and we need to figure out how to uh, benefit our societies from it. So it's been around for thousands of years, used for literally thousands of different things throughout uh, the millennia. Um, hemp was outlawed in this country with marijuana in the early 1930s. So here's the thing, hemp is cannabis. Cannabis is a, is a name, marijuana is can cannabis, so is hemp. Um, hemp is a uh, cannabis plant that has very little THC. So I, I'm sure many of you, if you've been following newspapers or any media, you've heard of something called CBD. And we could spend a couple hours just talking about CBD, but um, there's two main molecules that are talking about, uh, talked about with cannabis. And one is THC, and, and THC is high amounts in marijuana and that is an intoxicant and that's what gets people high. Uh, in hemp uh, there's very little THC. So that's the, that's the key differentiator. In fact, it's the only differentiator. Hemp is cannabis sativa and it happens to be a genetic strain that has very little THC in it. But it has many other compounds including CBD which we're now realizing has tremendous medical benefits uh, along with other chemicals within these plants. There are hundreds of molecules in the cannabis plant and what we don't understand is how they all play together to uh, provide healing. And we can talk about some of the medical uh, benefits as we go along. So in the last five years or so, uh, hemp has become quite popular in, in America, certainly starting in places like Oregon, California, uh, Colorado, where some of these things get some traction ahead of the East Coast. Um, in 2014, the government allowed hemp farming to occur in a small, small degree, and it, it actually developed quickly in those states is in 2018, the second farm bill, um, it legalized throughout the whole country. So we're seeing a huge popularity now in, in hemp products, hemp farming, and again, that's something we're excited to be part of. So uh, this legalization just took place in December, so this industry is about to unfold, about to build out supply chains and things like that, using a decades-old, millennia-old plant, and building a new industry around that old plant. So it's very exciting. Interestingly, Pennsylvania has uh, an incredible history in hemp. Um, people now think of Kentucky and uh, Colorado, but Pennsylvania, Hempfield, Hempfield, Lancaster County, right across the river. Uh, I grew up in Lancaster, didn't realize this, but it was called Hempfield because it, in the around the uh, first war, second world war, it was the largest hemp grow in the United States. So um, there's some interesting uh, history. William Penn obviously founded Pennsylvania and intended to grow hemp here. George Washington, Thomas Jefferson grew hemp. So uh, it's been a plant that has grown well in the U.S. and then went this 80-year hiatus where it wasn't uh, cultivated. So we talk about in our company, our farm company, we talk about it starts with a farmer. And so uh, again, I grew up a dairy farmer, fourth generation. Farm, farmers are struggling in this country, and I'm sure you know that or have heard this, but um, we have another slide from another talk that talks about farm revenue is down $9 billion, um, I think 18 from 17. So farmers are, are getting hurt in a number of ways. Dairy farming is brutal. Um, uh, corn and soybeans are, are typical products that are grown, but uh, the margins on those are minimal. So farmers are looking for something new, and uh, hemp, is a, hemp has huge potential to help their, their uh, quality of life and revenue. So we'll talk more about that. So if you're not familiar with hemp, you want to become familiar because it's an incredible plant. It, it does amazing things like it pulls CO2 out of the atmosphere, it sequesters CO2, 
it, it helps, it can regenerate soil, it can be grown in areas with toxic uh, issues and pull, it can pull the toxins out of the soil. Um, it, it's called weed for a reason because it grows like crazy with very little pesticide and very little water. Um, it can provide tremendous uh, plant-based nutrition. Hemp seeds are incredibly nutritious, they're filled with protein, omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids, so hemp seeds are, are going to be uh, used in a lot of things here. Uh, right now, Canada is the largest grower of, of hemp for seed, and they've been growing hemp since 1998. A company called Manitoba Harvest is really the only North American company that does a lot of hemp seed products, but as the U.S. starts to take off with this, the food opportunity is incredible. Uh, it can replace plastics. Bioplastics are a huge part of what we're looking at, and uh, We'll get into that, but um, to have biodegradable plastics from hemp uh, is something that you'll hear more about. Um, renewable energy, construction materials, and that's something, again, that we're focusing on, concrete reinforcement, automotive plastics, um, and obviously one of the most important things is uh, healthcare issues, and we'll talk about, again, these cannabinoids. When I say cannabinoids, I'm talking about everything in the plant. CBD is one of those, THC is the other. And again, THC, if it's below 0.3, that's what's considered hemp. So they're, they're, between marijuana and hemp, it's an arbitrary definition, and it's based on 0.3 of THC or less, then it's considered hemp. If it's more than that, it's considered marijuana. So uh, just to be clear and educate everybody. So our family, uh, again, I come from an ag, ag family, and uh, I'm really excited to be sort of back in the ag business, but also using my medical background and uh, in brand building. So Cross North America is a York-based family-owned agriculture company that's really dedicated to hemp uh, education, hemp uh, farming, and processing. Through this country, in this country, cannabis is going, undergoing some changes. There's a stigma that we've all grew up with, and I'm coming back to marijuana, because it's also cannabis, uh, 33 states in this country now have medical cannabis programs, Pennsylvania being one of them. Um, there are 11 states in this country that allow adult recreational marijuana. I'm not here to condone that, I'm just sharing those facts. Um, uh, again, hemp is a different product, and hemp is now legal in uh, every state in the country. Uh, again, we talked about CBD. If you haven't heard about CBD, you've probably been out of the country or hiding, or it's hard to not pick up a newspaper, read uh, something on the internet about this, or hear that your friend is using it for their dog seizures, or their mom's arthritis got better. Um, many of those things are true, and we'll talk about it further. So, uh, sustainability. People are looking for renewable, sustainable products. That's helping drive this hemp renaissance. Uh, again, we talked about agriculture. Farmers are struggling, and they're very excited to have new opportunities, and we found that firsthand, and we'll talk more about it. And the shifts in legislation, particularly this farm bill, uh, legalized hemp um, throughout the country. Uh, medical marijuana, and marijuana, I'm not sure what's going to happen there. Again, different topic. So we talk about hemp for health. Again, I've been a physician for 20 years. Um, when I was a uh, second year in practice with Joe Daniels Group, a company called Purdue Pharma that you may be familiar with from the media right now, came out with a drug called OxyContin. And the, the, the drug reps from, from that company were peddling OxyContin like crazy. And then at the same time, the, the government, the federal government and the Medicare program said, doctors need to treat pain more aggressively. You can't let your patient have any pain in the hospital. It became a true mandate. So the perfect storm of those things, in my mind, is what's created the op opioid epidemic that we're seeing today. And, and I hate to point out that drug, but that was a key part of how this whole opioid mess really came to be. And so um, clearly that's a huge societal problem and there are opportunities for medicines from this plant like CBD particularly, which has been shown to reduce cravings for opioid uh, use disorder. And so right there is one example of an important way that this can help in a, in a safe way. And so we'll talk more about CBD and the other cannabinoids, but the opportunity to uh, to help folks is tremendous. And one other anecdotal story, um, in March, Penn State University, I did my orthopedic training there, they released a study that was based on some cannabinoid therapy in a lab where they showed that colon cancer cells were being killed by several of the compounds from cannabis. It wasn't THC and it wasn't CBD, the two things that we all talk about. 
these cancer cells were killed by other molecules in these plants. So for decades, people have talked about cannabis being potentially chemotherapeutic. It comes from California, and there's hippie stories of people being cured from, from cancer with cannabis. But it's now being proven out in not just this study, but many others. So again, another example of how this can potentially become uh, incredibly helpful. Whole plant processing. So if you talk to anybody who's getting into hemp, probably 80 to 90% of people now go, I'm going to farm hemp because I want to sell CBD. So that's kind of the hot, sexy thing. There's a lot of margin and revenue right now in, in CBD. The prices are very high. That's going to change quickly as people begin to increase their, their farming. Um, using the entire plant is our model, and we believe in cannabinoid therapy and extracting that part of the plant, but these other parts are called the fiber. There's different types of fiber within a plant. Um, in our mind, that's, that's the best approach to growing this hemp industry. So um, I'm going to go through a couple products that come from hemp that you probably were never aware of. Um, we're, we're developing a, a facility in Redline called um, Hemplex. It's a hemp research park, and it's based on the old York cabinet facility on Redco Drive. And there's a machine that we're bringing. It's called the Hemp Train. And hemp Train is a kind of a turnkey processing system that takes the entire plant in a huge bale. So farmers will bale hemp and uh, deliver these large bales, and this machine will break them down into different types of fiber, and then also the, uh, the green biomass, which is where the cannabinoids can be extracted from. So one of the products that has been developed from this hemp train machine is called Enforce Fiber. It's a proprietary product, but it, it consists of little pieces of the outer fiber of the stalk of the hemp plant, and it's treated with some material to survive in, in cement, um, hence the black color. But this is used to reduce cracking and reduce the need, need for rebar in, in cement. It's an incredible product that was actually spec'd for the bobsled track in the 2022 Olympics in Beijing um, from the temp train. So pretty neat stuff. This is an example of some of the high-tech uh, construction materials that can come from hemp. So you'll hear more about Enforce because we're going to be making it in Redline. <laughs> Bioplastics. In, in Europe, Mercedes and BMW make car door liners out of hemp fiber composites. So hemp, hemp is usually used in, in car parts. Um, among many other uh, potential uh, uses. The U.S. car makers would love to be able to use this product, but they need a steady supply chain. And so that's almost the holy grail of, of hemp uh, industrial opportunities is to develop those supply chains to provide um, bioplastics to the automotive industry. So that's another area that we're going to be focusing on. It's not going to happen overnight, but uh, again, we're, we're going to take an aggressive uh, stance at that. Um, hempcrete, this is an amazing product. It, it, those little, little pieces within those blocks are from the inner, inner part of the hemp plant called the herd, H-U-R-D. And hempcrete is pretty incredible. It's antimicrobial. It's naturally water resistant. It has better sound absorption qualities. Um, it's not quite as strong as a concrete block for vertical, but uh, hempcrete, uh, you'll hear more about that if you haven't already. It's, an, again, a credible uh, building material used from, made from hemp. Animal feed and bedding. So uh, <laughs> hemp, uh, hemp herd can be chopped up like the stuff in those blocks and uses animal bedding. Again, it's antimicrobial. It reduces infections in places like chicken, um, chicken farms and things like that. Uh, horses, it has less dust. And uh, for some people have horses that have some respiratory issues. So it can be a great bedding product. But get, getting back to the seed, it's also a great feed. And so we're very active at the State Department of Ag uh, level here in Pennsylvania working to get uh, these, these seeds approved to be used for animal feed. There's a whole process that has to take place, but it's, it's underway now, so um, we'll be able to use this for a number of types of uh, animal feed. And even something like supercapacitors, um, hemp can be shaped off in very thin pieces and something called graphene, any, if there's any engineers or tech folks, graphene is a thin layer of, of carbon fiber and hemp can be uh, hemp can be processed into, into hemp graphene. So we're talking about super high-tech things that can come from this plant. So, so back to the company we're forming here locally. Uh, it's an agribusiness, again, focused on hemp farming, processing, and education. Uh, we've looked at a, really a, a vertically integrated <coughs> model, and we've been able to develop that here uh, over the last year, and it's just beginning. And we say seed to shelf. Uh, we're talking about local farmers that are growing. Um, 
So in March, at Winter's Farm, we hosted an event called the Hemp Farmer's Supper. Hemp Farmer's Supper. <laughs> and we uh, had the place sold out with 260 farmers from the, from the area who wanted to understand more about hemp and talk about growing it. So it was a great event, and we ended up signing up 2,000 acres of contracted hemp farming from 20 farmers who were uh, experienced mechanized farming. So hemp can be farmed in two different ways. One is more like tobacco or lettuce in a labor-intensive way, and that's typically done for what's called high CBD plants. The other way to plant it is like a, with a corn planter and mechanized farming. And so what we did is contract these 2,000 acres with a mechanized farming approach and uh, the product's six and seven feet high now. We've had an amazing year with weather and uh, so we're really excited about this first crop that we'll be uh, harvesting fairly soon. It'll be baled and then brought to our facility in Redline and processed. Talking about this hemp train, so there's a company in Calgary, Alberta that has spent six years, it's a small engineering firm, and they've spent the last six years developing a, a new way to process hemp. Up until now, the only machine that really would break down hemp is something called a hammer mill, which is a real old, really old school technique, almost if you think of a rotary phone and the iPhone, well, this is the iPhone and the rotary phone was an old hammer mill. So we felt that this was truly novel technology. Uh, the picture on the bottom right is sort of the small beta version of it, but uh, the first industrialized hemp train is being built now and will be then moved to Redline in October. So we're very excited about it. It's the first one in North America. And uh, we believe that this hemp train technology is going to be something that really helps jumpstart this entire industry throughout North America. So um, it's going to be an important part of our whole program. Pharmacy Partners, as Mike had mentioned, um, as I said, I'm still a licensed physician and I felt there was an opportunity for me and our team to really develop an education program and a way to do research in this area, contribute to the medical literature, and and educate folks in our community. And so we opened this in the Northwest Savings Bank building on ACO and Queen, I think about March. And um, so it's a, it's a great experience to come in and talk to folks about what is CBD, <coughs> how can it help me, what is hemp extract, what are these cannabinoids. It's not a marijuana dispensary. We do not sell marijuana there, I just want to say that. Um, there's a lot of confusion out there in the community. But uh, um, so we sell hemp products, hemp cannabinoid products that have um, a lot of these medicines and, and chemicals in them that have been shown to do some amazing things. So um, I see patients there one day a week, um, developing referrals now from the large health systems, Pittsburgh, Wellspan, uh, seeing cancer patients who are struggling with a number of things. Uh, again, we can talk, that's almost a whole other topic, but it, in our mind, it's an important part of sort of a seed to shelf uh, educational uh, opportunity and really stay in the front lines of, of clinical. Uh, patient treatment and uh, really tie them all together. So, so this is an ambitious project for our family. We've brought in some great team members. Uh, we're excited to use Winter's Farm as kind of a, a base for this. Tonight we have uh, 200, over 200 people coming for the, basically the same talk in a public education forum. And so uh, we're very excited about kind of sharing what we know, what we don't know. There's a lot we need to study, but clearly this can, these molecules can help on the medical side, and there's so many other potential uses for this plant, and we're honored to be part of helping pioneer this in the United States. Um, we just came to an uh, opportunity where we're actually going to be acquiring the company in Calgary that makes the M-Train. We signed a stock purchase agreement to uh, acquire that technology, and so we will be manufacturing M-Trains and, and selling them throughout North America. So we truly will have, your county will be uh, really a center of this renaissance in the United States and we're thrilled to be part of it and uh, we're very excited about what it can do for the ag community and uh, our entire country. So it's been an honor to present this. I'd love to take some questions if we have time. I'm not sure of the schedule, but uh, please be here. Yeah. Steve, is there an issue with soil depletion Question about soil depletion and growing hemp. I'm, I'm definitely not the agro agronomist, and uh, there's there's certainly soils that uh, certain hemp uh, strains will grow better in. Um, we're still understanding that. Um, I would probably end up deferring that to uh, an agronomist, but uh, uh, it, it grows in so many different types of soils. There's certain things it doesn't like a lot of water early on, but other than that, it's it's a very adaptable plant. Uh, great question. 
Go ahead, sir. Uh, the, one of the economics for a farmer, the yield per acre, in other words, bales or pounds, I don't know how you're creating this, uh, in terms of raw production of product that is sold to a rough tip, rough train, that's the hemp train. If I were a farmer, how would I see this? I'll kind of talk to that in general. The question is about economics for the farmer, which is, again, we said it starts with the farmer. If the farmers are not excited to grow this, they're not going to do better with it. They're not going to want to grow it. So, again, in generality, we, we, uh, we did contract these 2,000 acres because we wanted to really jumpstart the industry, and we made a commitment to them. Um, Hemp is two things. It can be the very, very expensive high CBD type product where people here in thousands and thousands of an acre, that's high risk, it's high labor, um, a lot of, and a chance of even losing the crop if, if for some reason the THC would go high, it would drift up. And so that's high risk, high reward. Um, this type of farming, we, we assured them they're going to do far better than they would with corn and beans, but we didn't make any outlandish. Um, uh, projections and the crop that we grew is called dual purpose. It's both for fiber and cannabinoids, so it doesn't have the crazy high CBD amounts, but it also has very little risk of of the THC getting above 0.3. So uh, clearly, farmers uh, can do better with these crops. Uh, the specifics are depending on what sort of risk they want to take and how they farm. Certain farmers don't want to do any labor, manual labor. So many Amish farmers now are are switching from tobacco to CBD or high CBD hemp because they have the family labor, they have the they have the model and inexperienced or inexpensive labor. So it's amazing how I many Amish folks are switching. That's what happened in Kentucky. It, Kentucky has almost entirely switched from tobacco to hemp. So pretty fascinating. Go ahead. I was wondering a little bit about uh, OEE, which is operational equipment effectiveness. Uh, the the uh, it's, it's a factor that's put on the production lines. The ability to keep it producing. The product coming. It seems like you have a seasonal product grown seasonally. How do you keep that billions of dollars of production line and the people working on that line working three or six, five days a year? Uh, that's a great question. Um, question about uh, manufacturing efficiency and, and seasonal crops. So we're going to be battling this product. Uh, on the fiber side, there, you have some, a little more flexibility in how the products are stored. Hemp is naturally antimicrobial. It's pretty incredible. It kills bugs, it kills E. coli, it kills uh, staph aureus, superbugs. So it's pretty resistant. It can be stored in a bale outside. So we're going to be storing a good bit of it outside under tarp. Um, we're also going to store some in our building. But we're going to be process or processing it throughout the year. Um, but as you said, it is typically seasonal crop, although we've had some farmers go in a second, a second crop already, even in Pennsylvania in this climate. So down south, where you've got longer uh, warm stretches, uh, it can be two or three a season, uh, but great question. So will you, will you expand your supply chain south to get that crop throughout the year, or will you just go on a storage model? Story? We're looking at 100 to 200 mile perimeter right now. I mean, you could certainly put hemp bales on a, on a rail car or a, a flatbed ship, but the, beyond 150, 200 miles we feel is not going to uh, be justified, particularly on the fiber side. So more likely other processing centers will be developed. The hemp train is sort of a mid-sized machine. It's not a $20 million three-year lead time machine, and nor is it something that's pulled behind a pickup truck. Um, and so right now the industry really has those two extremes, and that's why we feel the hemp train will sort of fit in a niche where it's an industrial machine, but it's affordable enough that it could uh, be placed throughout the country in several in each state, to be honest. So. Any other questions? Go ahead, Is there any um, uh, regulation around the crop making sure people don't go in there? <laughs> great, great question about regulation. So if you watched WGAL last week, one of our farmers put up some signs that said, this is hemp, it's not marijuana, you can't get high from it. Right. It's all over the, um, it, it is true. So uh, unlike the marijuana permitting and licensing in dispensaries, which is crazy competitive and lots of money and lots of hassles, uh, hemp is hemp is an agricultural product. It's it's like wheat and corn. It's eligible for crop insurance as of next year, um, and it's grown out in the uh, in the open. It's not a greenhouse, and it's not um, it's not fenced off. Although it should be for the deer possibly, but uh, it, it, and you can't get high from it. I mean that's that's the the point. Um, we've had no problems. We've been growing it uh, almost two and a half months now, and 
no problems we know of. Um, but uh, it's a great question. I think we're out of.